Welcome to Approximation Algorithms and the lecture on Ongain Algorithms Part 1. My name is Rasmus Pei. We'll start today by defining the key notion of competitive ratio. Then we are going to revisit the problem of scheduling job on parallel machines that we considered earlier in the course. Then we'll move on to bin packing, show a greedy two approximation algorithm, and also give a lower bound on the competitive ratio. Finally, we'll consider the online Steiner tree problem and show both lower and upper bounds. The competitive ratio is, me is a measure used to denote the quality of uh, online algorithms. Let up denote the cost of an optimal solution. Then we say that an online algorithm is C-competitive if it finds a solution of cost at most C times opt. There's also an asymptotic notion of competitiveness so an online algorithm is asymptotically C-competitive if it finds a solution of cost at most C times opt plus something that's little O of opt. Here it's important that this are worst case, case guarantees for any kinds of input. So this must always hold. So basically competitive here is synonymous with what we have called approximation factors previously in the course. So note here that the little o of opt is going to be negligible, so the approximation factor is basically approaching c as opt gets larger. We recall the problem of scheduling jobs on multiple machines. The input consists of a number m, which is the number of machines, and a sequence p1 through pn of processing times. In the online version, these are being revealed one at a time and they are all non-negative. So this is the new thing compared to the setup that we have seen in the first lecture. Graham's algorithm, which is different from the local search algorithm that we saw in the first lecture, is a simple greedy algorithm that assigns each job to the machine that currently has the smallest load. If there are ties, they can be broken arbitrarily. So let's consider a particular configuration, in this example with m equals to 3. So the first three jobs are put on separate machines, and then we always put the next job on the least loaded machines. So it could end up looking something like this. Now, in order to analyze this, we can consider the starting time of the longest running job. Before this time, no machine can be idle. So this means that this starting time can be at most the average processing time, which is an upper, upper bound by opt. Also, the, the length of the longest job is at most opt. So the total cost can be at most two opt. That is, the competitive ratio is bounded by two. The factor 2 here is tight in the sense that it's the best constant that holds for any number of machines m. Next, we consider the bin packing problem in the online setting. So recall that an input to, to bin packing consists of a sequence of numbers, uh, sizes of, of items, and now in the online setting they, these are revealed one at a time. Each item um, as a size, which is in the interval 0 to 1. The objective is to assign these items to bins, and we, have, uh, we can create any number of bins m that we want, such that in each bin, if we sum all the items in the bin, bj, uh, their sum is at most 1, that's the capacity of the bin, bin, and m is supposed to be as small as possible. So we have to arrange them in the bins so that no bin is over full, and we have as few bins as possible. In the online setting, once we have assigned an item to a bin, we cannot change the assignment. An obvious approach is the greedy one. So the greedy algorithm always works on one bit at a bin at a time. Um, and if there is room in the in the bin for the next item, we simply put the item number i in there. Otherwise, we seal off that bin and move on to a new empty bin. Now I want you to pause and think. So I claim that the greedy algorithm has a competitive ratio of 2. 
and in fact exactly two. So this is both an upper and a lower bound. As you might suspect, the greedy algorithm is not the best one can do. One way of doing better is the so-called first fit algorithm. For an item i, we place ai in the first bin that is existing that has capacity for having a as an item number i as well. If no such bin exists, we open a new bin and place ai in it. So in this example, the first two items go to the first bin. The third item doesn't fit in the first bin, so we place it in the second one. Fourth item fits in the first bin. Fifth item doesn't fit in the first or the second, so we open a third bin, and so on. In 1971, Jeff Ullman showed that first fit algorithm uses at most 1.7 times opt plus three bins. So that is, its asymptotic competitive ratio is 1.7. Also, the fact that 1.7 is the best asymptotic competitive ratio uh, that one can show for the first fit algorithm. How much can we improve first fit by being even smarter? It turns out that there are lower bounds for bin packing's competitive ratio that hold not just for first fit, but for any algorithm. So we want to show a limit on any online algorithm for the bin packing problem, not just a particular one. We'll, we are going to look at a particularly tricky input sequence. So let epsilon be some small number greater than zero and look at an input sequence where we first have a bunch of half minus one size inputs. So that's called the number of repetitions m, and then a bunch of half plus epsilon. So also occur in m, m times. So after the first m inputs, we have placed these items in some set of bins. It's, it's going to be somewhere between m half and m. So let's call this number m half plus t and of those 2t will have only one element in them and the rest are going to have two exactly two elements in them so that's the only way we can achieve m half plus t bins now in the second phase we're going to be able to match 2t of these two bins with uh, one element from the first phase so two elements from the second phase do not fit in a bin and the remaining m minus 2t are going to need separate bins. So now let's consider the competitive ratio after the, after the first phase. So, so that is, after the first phase, we have to compare m half plus t, which is the number of bins that we use, with the optimal number of bins after the first phase, which is m half. We can pack the elements two by two. So we're going to use that uh, ratio. Let opt m denote the optimum if we just consider the first m items. So if we work this out, it becomes one plus two t over m. Now let's consider the competitive ratio after the second phase. So both of these are lower bounds on the kind of global competitive ratio of the, of the algorithm. So after the second phase, we have the bins from the first phase plus the m minus 2t that got new bins divided by m, which is the optimum, where we pair elements from the first phase with elements from the second phase. So uh, in order to get a lot of m bins. So here we get 3 half minus t over m. So now the, we have two lower bounds for the competitive ratio. One is increasing in t and one is decreasing in t. And we can see that no matter what t is, one of these is going to be greater than or equal to th 4 over 3. So this is going to be a lower bound on any algorithm. This is an active area of research. In 2018, Ballock et al. showed that a competitive ratio of bin packing is between 1.543 and 1.578. In the final part of the lecture, we are going to consider the online Steiner tree problem. The input has two parts. First of all, there's a distance metric given by a weighted graph. This is given ahead of time, so it's not 
online in any sense. So we know this, this graph completely. Second, there's going to be a sequence T1 through Tk of terminal vertices. So these are the terminal vertices for the Steiner tree that we want to build. And the, these are given on, online one at a time. And the objective, as in the standard Steiner tree problem, is to output a Steiner tree that spans the terminal uh, vertices. And we want to make the Steiner tree as cheap as possible. Here the restriction is that we can only add edges, not remove any, and we need to maintain the Steiner tree at all times. An obvious approach is a greedy algorithm that in each step adds the node or the, sorry, the edge to this tree that is the cheapest possible way of connecting the existing um, terminals to the new one. So simply choose the cheapest edge TITJ to some previous node TJ. So first we add T1 to T2. For T3 we have two choices. We could either connect it to T1 or T2 and we are going to choose the cheapest one. So let's say it's the one for T2. For T4 we have three choices and we choose again the cheapest one and so on. The compensative ratio of the greedy algorithm is going to grow with the number of terminals k, as we'll see next. We consider a particular metric, which is the shortest path metric on a path of k vertices. So a simple path. So that is, uh, neighboring vertices will have distance 1, distances that are, for example, 3 apart, on the path will have distance 3 and, and so on. So T1 is just chosen at the end uh, and now T2 is chosen to be as far as possible from T1 as possible. So that's at the very other end of the path. T3 is chosen to be as far as possible away from T1 and T2 uh, and so on and so forth. So we always choose the next uh, terminal to be as far as possible away from the previous ones. So now in every step except the first one, there is some node, I claim, that has distance at least k uh, over i plus 1 or, or divided by 2 to the previous nodes. And this is simply because if we look at the i plus 1 intervals uh, of length k over i plus 1, one of them is going to be empty. So we can place the node in the middle of that. So this means that we, the total cost is at least the sum of these distances, which is k times the harmonic, kth harmonic number, which is omega k log k. On the other hand, opt is clearly just including the edges of the path, which have total weight k minus 1. So the ratio between these two is omega of log k. Finally, we are going to give an upper bound on the comparative ratio of, of greedy. And the key lemma here is that essentially what happened in the previous lower bound is tight. So if we look at the ith most expensive edge that is uh, chosen by the greedy algorithm, it's going to have a cost that is at most 2 times opt divided by i, which is up to a constant factor uh, tight for the previous example. And the corollary of this is that we can now upper bound the cost of greedy by two times the harmonic number times opt, which gives us a competitive ratio of order log k, matching the previous bound up to a constant factor. To prove the lemma, we somehow have to relate the cost to the cost of the optimal Steiner tree. So let's, let's draw the optimal Steiner tree here. And by definition, this has cost opt. Now we claim that if we take any set of terminals, it's possible to connect them with a cost that is not too far from the cost of, of opt. We can always create a cycle visiting these terminals that has cost at most two times opt. So this is the claim. So why is this true? Now we can use a technique that is a little bit similar to what we used when we consider traveling salesmen. So we look at the uh, 
um, Euler tour around, which has length exactly two times opt. And we kind of take the ordering of the terminal nodes that we are interested in that corresponds to the Euler tour. The cost of going directly from one terminal to the next is bounded by the cost of the Euler tour because of the triangle inequality. If we have I terminal nodes and a tour among them of length at most 2 opt, it means that some of the edges, or at least one of the edges, has a cost of at most 2 opt divided by I. So finally, let's use this to give the last part of the proof. So let's order the terminals according to the uh, cost incurred by Greedy, such that the most expensive terminal comes first and the cheapest terminal com comes last. So sigma is the permutation that orders them in this way. And now we're going to look at the first set of the I most expensive. So this is called CI. Uh, and we are going to look at the, the cycle containing these. Now consider the cost t sigma i. It's less than or equal to the previous pre t sigmas, which in turn are chosen as the cheapest edge connecting to, to that vertex. So t sigma i is often bounded by the cost of any edge within the i terminals. Now we can use the claim before, saying that there is some edge within these terminal vertices that has cost at most 2 opt over i, so that also bounds t of sigma i. So the cheapest in ci has cost at most 2 opt over i as claimed.